In the mid-19th century, Overend Gurney was one of the very finest finance houses in London. In the early 1860s, though, things started quietly going wrong. There were a couple of poor trading years, and perhaps desperate for some good financial results, Overend Gurney engaged in some speculative investments to the extraordinary tune of £4 million, or roughly one and a quarter billion Australian dollars in 2024. When those investments didn't perform, the directors decided to undertake a corporate restructure, which would inject new capital, but would also allow them to strategically move debts and losses around for maximum advantage. When they released a prospectus, they couldn't just say, hey, we're raising money because we've managed to destroy the finances of one of the most respected companies in England. Instead, they made it seem like this was a rare opportunity to become part of that famous English company. Peak did not purchase shares in the initial offering for that new company, but instead purchased them on the stock market once they had begun trading. The investment was disastrous, and the new company was soon in liquidation. Peak sued. The first question was whether there was deceit in the prospectus. Lord Cairns said, Mere silence could not, in my opinion, be a sufficient foundation for this proceeding. Mere non-disclosure of material facts, however morally censurable, however that non-disclosure might be a ground in a proper proceeding at a proper time for setting aside an allotment or a purchase of shares, would in my opinion form no ground for an action in the nature of an action for misrepresentation. There must, in my opinion, be some active misstatement of fact, or at all events, such a partial and fragmentary statement of fact as that the withholding of that which is not stated makes that which is stated absolutely false. The House of Lords found that there had been active falsehood in this case, but it had been falsehood directed to the potential subscribers to the initial share issue. The prospectus was not directed to later potential investors who might purchase shares on the exchange. As a result, Peak was left without a remedy. From this case, we learned that the tort of deceit requires active conduct, usually active misstatement, which promotes a falsehood in order to cause the victim to adopt a course of action.